welcome to the Mouse Bites Podcast! Here we go! Welcome to Mouse Bites, the show all about Disney video games, past and present. I'm your host, Jeff, and I am joined, as always, by Clay. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Good. Uh, it's yeah. It's, uh, it's been a kind of dreary day over here in Indianapolis. Yeah. Very rainy and cloudy and not very... I've just been, like, sleepy and, like, not energized all day, so I'm hoping... To get psyched up for this episode. That's right. Yeah, we want to get want to get all jazzed up for these little vermin. Varmin? Yeah, I f- <laughs> var- var- varminskas. Woodland uh, critter creatures. Yeah, this is kind of starting to be us getting into the ter- territory of, I would say, some of the bigger um, titles. Maybe the maybe the ones that people are more, more familiar with. Obviously, mm-hmm. not everybody, but. Um, I don't know. It's not, you know, DuckTales or uh, Lion King or Aladdin yet. But this is, yeah, we're getting closer. I so think, yeah, we're, is, we're kind of on the brink of it. Yeah, I don't, I, I'm not rating this game based on how good it is. But as far as, like, well, well-known and you know, famousness, I'd say this is, like, a, a B game maybe. So it's about yeah. time we hit some of those Bs. Yeah, amen. And with that, we uh, should tell you what that game is, although I know that you all know because you clicked play on whatever you're watching this on. But today's game is Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers for the NES. Alrighty, so as we always start off with, what the heck is this game? Clay, you want to give us a little bit of info about what it is and where it came from? Sure. So, um... In case you're confusing this with another game, uh, this is a Chippendale Rescue Rangers game. So it's based off the TV show uh, from the 90s, uh, with which shared the same name. Uh, it is a side-scrolling, um, I don't know. It's, it's a side-scrolling game. Really. Yeah. Platforming with, uh, yeah, I should have said platforming. I don't know why I didn't think of that. And then there's also like some throwing mechanics where you're able to throw some things. Um there's certain games that I feel like are similar to this, but I want to say this was kind of uh, unique for its time, uh, at least as far as like the pick up and throw mechanics. Um, the other thing that was really big with this game was it was very heavily and good with co-op. So it was two player yeah. simultaneous play, which is pretty big for you know the NES. There wasn't mm-hmm. a ton of, of those, um, but... Yeah, like I said, a lot of games, I think, used either this engine or a very similar one later. Like uh, Mickey's Dangerous Chase for the Game Boy used a lot of these, like, pick up a, a box and throw it kind mm. of, you know, mechanic. But um, most mostly famous for the fact that it, it was created by Capcom, which, as we've mentioned, we've already done an NES Capcom game here on the show uh, when we covered uh, Little Mermaid. And so... Yeah, they were Capcom. Capcom was really well known for their Disney games back on the NES, and so mm-hmm. this is another one in that family. And uh, I would say just as good a caliber, if maybe not even a little bit higher. And so uh, they did develop this. Um, it released back in uh, 1990 uh, in Japan and uh, North America, and then for whatever reason, uh, Europe got it. Uh, in December of 91 so a bit later for them uh, but hmm. it, as far as I know Japan and, and North America kind of received it at the same time um, I, I did read something about how there was some some small things fixed uh, before it came out in Europe because they had some extra time so I don't know if that was the main reason why they pushed it back because they were wanting to fix some some glitches and things or what the whole issue was I, I couldn't get a a concrete answer but regardless there's a little bit of a gap there but uh early 90s uh which honestly 1990 that's pretty late for the uh for the nes isn't yeah it? it's pretty late yeah 
But the crazy thing is, uh, talking about what the heck this game is, there was a sequel to this game that did <laughs> yeah. come out uh, on the NES. Um, I'm, I don't I honestly don't even know um, what year that came out because that had to have been even later into the uh, yeah. you know, into the NES days. So that's kind of crazy too. Thinking on that. Um, other than that, there was two consoles that this game came out on technically uh the nes was pretty much the main one and then it was also ported or however you want to call it to the play choice 10 which was an arcade machine that nintendo put out um huh. in fact i put a lot of time into this game on the play choice 10 because my father had one and so wow. this was one one of the games we had um because the play choice 10 really only played nes games okay that was kind of its thing and so um luckily this was one of them that was put on there so cool uh yeah i don't know if i first played it on there or not but um that was definitely one of the big memories i have is playing it on there so um lastly the only additional additional notes i could find um it's worth noting this game was also included on the very recently released disney afternoon collection which came out on current consoles um and so this one and the second one were both on that uh which is pretty cool if you haven't checked that out we we haven't really talked about it on the show here uh it's a pretty cool game uh, i had a bunch of different features and added things i think you could rewind you could do like some speed run uh stuff where you could try to run through the game as fast as you can and post your speed runs and all that so um yeah so i just figured it'd be worth noting i, I guess it did kind of technically re-release on that console as well other than that i'm not sure if it's ever seen any other re-releases so that was a pretty pretty uh, big deal i guess for it so um yeah so that's a lot of details <laughs> in a nutshell about yeah. what this game is you might even say in an acorn shell um just because <laughs> they're chipmunks um no, I, I looked it up real quick. The sequel was released in December of 93 in Japan and then uh, January of 94 in the U.S. And as late as September 94 in Europe. So, wow. I mean, that's bordering on Donkey Kong Country's release there, which was November of <laughs> 94. So um, that's insane. But Well, I, that I explains why nobody's played the second one. Right, yeah. I mean, I think anything on the NES released after 91 was usually lost because... Yeah. Everybody was obsessed with the Genesis and the Super Nintendo at that time because of, I mean, 16 bits was better than eight. So, um, interesting, a lot of info there, uh, and yeah, it's uh, it's cool to see them, Capcom, kind of really getting into their own with that, whatever that engine was that they used for a lot of these games. Um, uh, going along those lines, since we kind of just went in depth on what it was. Uh, we can kind of talk about our history with the game and if we have any sort of nostalgic feelings or, or what have you. Um, since uh, you just covered the what it was, I'll go ahead and start with that. Um, and unfortunately, I have to say that I, I don't have any history with the game or nostalgia. Uh, I just played it for the first time when we were prepping, prepping for this episode. So um, I'm kind of sad that I missed out on a lot of these. Like I I'd said before with like a Little Mermaid and... and really any of the other one of these that we cover i didn't play any of them really as a kid and so Dang. i missed out yeah it's a bummer because like i had an nes and i had a you know I, I had a love for disney and i say this like every episode but um just for whatever reason just didn't have any of them and didn't have access to them so missed out on okay. some, some real gems um what about you what was your history with this one well before i do that I had a question. Did, did you ever watch the show Chippendale Rescue? Yes, Rangers? absolutely, religiously. Okay, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, that's good. At least yeah. you have that. Yep. Like that. That makes it a little bit better in my eyes, anyway. Fair enough. Um, as far as me, uh, I had this game as a kid. I don't know when we got it. I have no idea what year it was. It could have been years and years after this had come out, because we were a little bit behind. But um, I do remember playing this as a kid with my siblings. Uh, on the NES, and then I mentioned we also played it on the Play Choice 10. So I had it as a kid. Uh, I don't remember ever getting too far in it. I think we struggled with it, and for whatever reason, uh, didn't really push ourselves to get super far in it. I think when we had an NES, we had quite a few games because they were pretty cheap at that point. Mm -hmm. And so if if we struggled or just weren't enjoying ourselves, we would 
just move on to the next game. And so probably didn't give it completely the, the time it deserved. If I had only had like two or three games, I'm sure I would have got much further in this, especially because I could play with my siblings. But uh, we were probably juggling a, a bunch of different games at this point. So this was a little lower on our list. Um, but I do remember, I don't know how long it, ago it was, but it had to have been like three or four years ago. I remember I got a copy of this and uh, sat down one day and played it for a while. And I remember being really surprised at how much fun I was having playing it because it had been a while um, and wasn't struggling as much as I had remembered and was like making much better progress than I had as a kid. And so um, kind of caught me off guard. I remember telling a friend of mine, wow, this is, you know, this is actually really good. I completely, um, I don't know if I wrote it off or if I was just like, eh, it's a good game, but I'm all right, not playing it. And so I uh, really enjoyed it. And then uh, just this week, busted it out once more and played through uh, almost the entire game and was having a pretty good time relatively uh, well uh, did start getting frustrated toward the end and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hit on that a little bit uh, once we go through the levels um, so a little toward the end I started saying some some bad words that I shouldn't have been saying in frustrations um, but still I think it's a very endearing game and and it means a lot to me just because I also really like the show and um, yeah and I still really like this game so uh, that's my history with this game Okay, good deal. Uh, with that, we'll jump into kind of breaking down the game itself. All right, so as always, we'll go into gameplay discussion, which will discuss visuals, the audio, the gameplay difficulty, and the story. Um, we can start with... I think we usually start with visuals. Um, yes. Yeah, so... Jumping right into those, uh, I, for one, really like the visuals of this game. I think it uh, looks really great for an NES game, and it, it uh, uh, represents the source material very well. Um, you know, there's varied locations and different backgrounds for each one, and there's good character sprites, good enemy variation, um, for the most part. Uh, you know, as, as you progress through the game, different enemy types show up, and uh, they, they're animated nicely. Um, you know, keeping it relative that it is an 8-bit NES game and all that in mind, I'd say it overall looks pretty good. Um, what are your What are your overall thoughts on the visuals? Yeah, I wish I had like more knowledge when it came to visuals on NES games. Like, oh, this NES game looks miles better than this one, because mm -hmm. um, I I just I don't know, and so it's hard to say. I I want to say that I think it it overall it's pretty good. It's not straining to look at. Uh, there's nothing like overly ugly or like <laughs> like looks way out of place. Mm. Um, like you said, I think the the enemy character models are good. I think Chip and Dale both look really good. Mm. Um, the cutscenes look all right. Yeah, um, not tons of detail, and um, you know some of the background of these levels, especially like the outdoors ones. Yeah, they're just blue, straight colors. Yeah, right. And then once you get inside, like there's the the uh, bar level where they have they they have like striped walls and yeah. then you get to um, <laughs> there's like a sink level where you uh there's like tile in the back so every now and then you could i could feel like they i felt like they were trying to add yeah. additional details um so really overall it's not not a bad looking game at all i would say um there's fun little details they've added um like when you pick up an apple and you're carrying it you little sweat drops come off your head mm -hmm. um there's like the little electricity on the the wires uh, running back and forth and stuff. So I feel like they they didn't like cut corners with it. It really feels like they spent the time to make it look quality. Um, so yeah. So I, I I'd say I think it's overall pretty great. So yeah, and and I definitely agree with a lot of those points. Like that, there are some moments where the backgrounds are a little bland, but there's a lot of moments where I think they did well with like brickwork and tile work and. Um, dirt hills and just lot you know different different variations that go a long way and, and are you know if you compare it to the marios and some of the other things where i would never say that a mario game looks bad but that you know the backgrounds tended to just be very simplistic and repeated over and over and over again um, i'd say this right. one was a good variation overall um, yeah so yeah beyond that um 
I don't really have a whole lot else to say on the visuals. I, you know, they're, they're adequate for what they need to be. And I think for any time we do an eight bit game, it's hard to really go in depth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, there's three hearts up in the corner and mm, yeah, there's a UI. <laughs> yeah. That, that's really it. Super simple, not distracting, which yep. I'm always a fan of. Right. And it's um, full screen. You don't have like that, you know, one third missing, like a lot of games at yeah, a time and like the Mickey games totally. and stuff. So that's great. Totally. I mean, that's always good. Um, multiple sprites on screen animating on at certain times with enemies or with your two player co-op. That's pretty impressive. Um, yeah. I didn't experience any lag or no, like I, any kind of crazy frame skips. So I didn't see any of that. Um, and then like there's, <laughs> there's a little mechanic where you can like hide in the items you're holding by ducking. Yes. And, um, you know, you, you see the little eyes popping through. It's kind of the <laughs> original Metal Gear. Although I don't, I don't remember if Metal Gear, I never played the original Metal Gear. So I don't know if they copied from that or if that, you know, the, the NES one, but either way, hiding in a box. Yes. Totally, totally awesome. Two thumbs up on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the bosses, some of them are some pretty big sprites and uh, yeah. are cool. Um, mm-hmm. with good variation. Uh, the mechanics of them are maybe not super different. It looks like, but uh, yeah, they, 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 they look fun. Um, I didn't, yeah, I didn't get a chance to play any of the bosses because I suck at the game. But um, I did watch through a long play to make sure I was up to snuff with what was offered, and and they looked great. Um, I think we can then move on to the audio. Uh, and right off the bat, the the music of the game I really liked. Um. Again, just from from mostly from a, a long play. Uh, there's some good level tunes, and, and Capcom at the time I think is pretty well known for making good uh, Disney game music uh, that's both original and inspired from its source material. Um, I think, as you all know, our intro theme is from DuckTales, which is a Capcom game from the same era. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So what is your what is your thoughts on the music of the game? All right, so the theme song is super dope. I mean, yeah, it's literally taken straight from the show, but really good rendition for it, for a chip tune. Like, I think they covered it really well. It was like a chip chip tune. Oh, I see what you did there. (laughs) Ah. (laughs) Um, As far as the other music, I don't know if this is all original after that or if any of this did come from the show. Uh, Yeah, actually, I I I I haven't seen enough of the show, at least in recent years. I actually watched uh, an episode on VHS the other night, but nice. um, yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, but I, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. So maybe there is. Um, I will say I think the first level music gets really annoying after a while. Interesting. Um, I actually really I like the it, first level music. So and that's all I really yeah. got through. So and that's maybe that's why it gets obnoxious to me. Is after a while, I was like. Because as a kid, I spent so much time on level one. Right. And I think it yeah. just got to me after a while. Um, hmm. But in in the yeah, most of the rest of the levels, I honestly didn't have any issues with. Um, the level select is kind of upbeat and and fun. And then, um, you know, depending on what level level you're in, I think it has kind of a different feel. Uh, you hit the the bar level and it's a little bit more jazzy sounding and stuff. So it felt like they're actually trying to match it to the level and not just like, uh, here's another chip tune for another level. And mm-hmm. so, um, outside of that, it's hard to kind of embellish on it more than that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, cause once again, it is an NES game and I know we keep using that as an excuse, but, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the scope of them is, was just smaller and, and the <laughs> abilities of them was too. So yeah. And that, and, and to piggyback, or, or continue on with that like the sound effects for the game are are very um of their era you know there's just only so much you can do <laughs> when your your music is taking up most of your sound channels your your sound effects get kind of limited or you know when a sound effect plays and a little bit of the song cuts out like it's just kind of classic 8-bit issues um it was never detrimental to the experience and and none of none of the sound effects that i recall hearing ever seemed wrong or or annoying so, you know, yeah. a little gamey in the in the not in the sense of gamey the when you have venison or whatever, but <laughs> gamey in that <laughs> uh, you know chip tune sound. So, yeah, yeah, and like the boss music, I don't know if it's the same in every level, but it kind of has like a Pokemon battle I feel. I thought the or same thing. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. Da, 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 and it's just That's it's funny. real intense and 
really pulls you in. So, um, but they do repeat some songs I've noticed in, in d- different levels. So, mm-hmm. um, they probably did were trying to save some space or only had so much to work with. Yeah. Uh, so there was some repeating songs here and there, but um, really over- overall, it's it's not bad music and some of it's pretty catchy so uh the fact that they repeated some of it really didn't bother me or like pull me out of it so um no issues uh with me like i said the first level gets a little bit obnoxious but it's it's super nostalgic for me anyways and and i could probably hum it if you asked me on the street Mm, uh mm -hmm. how it went you know so but that's i think just from playing it for so long i don't know if it's necessarily like that catchy that if i heard it one time i could you know recite it for you a week later but as a kid playing it it, it's pretty ingrained in my brain definitely the intro uh in fact sometimes i hear if i like start singing the theme song to the show i'll hear the game version in my head you know the chiptune version and not the (laughs) the actual like the tv show theme so uh i think that says something about it yeah definitely Alrighty, so from there, um, I think we've kind of covered audio pretty well, so we can jump over into the gameplay and and with that, the difficulty of the game. Um, At its core, like we mentioned, it's a 2D platformer side-scroller. There's not much, if any, variation from that, really. Uh, You essentially have Chip or Dale and or together going across the screen. Um, You pick up items, usually crates or sometimes, I think they're nuts, like metal nuts, not like chipmunk nuts right um that you can kind of pick up and throw and or hide in like we mentioned so down will will crouch and, and hide um you can throw up or you can throw left or right um i noticed in the first level that there's no backtracking kind of like the original super mario brothers it's um, pretty much every level which yeah. is interesting because at the end of getting all the way to the right you climb up a like a telephone pole and then all of a sudden the, the game scrolls back right to left and then you can't go back to the right like it's fascinating that the programming is there to prevent it earlier in the stage, but then you actually do scroll back higher up and you know, you die if you fall down below that. But um, beyond that, um, I don't know how many other mechanics there really are. The enemies kind of have variable attacks where they, you know, they charge at you or they jump really high. Um, And a lot of them in the first level are set up to where if you're trying to speed run it and you're not familiar with their patterns, you pretty much are guaranteed to jump into the enemies because I think it's just, I think it was in the intent of the designers, um, which honestly is, is a really good way to learn the mechanics of the game and to learn the enemy patterns early on um, to better prepare you for later levels. Uh, so I, I don't fault the game for doing that to you because it, it teaches you. Um, yeah. I just happen to be really terrible at it and actually couldn't beat the first level. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, and that's not uncommon, dude. I mean, I, yeah. like I said, as a kid, I struggled with it. And I think a lot of people, this is a game you got to work on. Like yeah. If I'd NES had the time, games. I could have, but yeah. Right. And it's just like, it's something you got to learn. I mean, even mm-hmm. when I picked it up this week, um, I wasn't getting too terribly far. And so I had to work with it a little bit. Yeah. And then even today, like I, I got to, the, I think the second to last level. And so it's just something you got to build a little muscle memory, learn the mechanics, learn how certain things work, how certain mm-hmm. enemies are. And then from there you can, you can kind of work your way through quicker. Totally. Um, um, as far did, as mechanic, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say real quick, I did notice a few environmental puzzles. There's one where you have to like jump on faucets to turn them off or like there's some switches and things here and there. So yeah, that's cool. Add some totally. variation. Uh, what were you going to uh, say? Sorry. So one of the big things with this game is that the levels are, you can play every level in the game, but they're not all mandatory. Yeah. So it's a little less linear because of that. Uh, there are certain levels you just have to play to get through it. Uh, it kind of has like a Mario three vibe on the, uh, um, oh, yeah. on the stage select or whatever, which mm-hmm. is pretty cool. Excuse me. And so there's actually some levels I don't think I've ever played in this game. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, just because I've either always gone a certain way or, for whatever reason, just never played them. And so even uh, just watching watching some footage and some other playthroughs, I realize there's some other levels that have some interesting mechanics. Like there's one with uh, you get on a boat for a very short amount of time. Oh, cool. uh, it's not like very well done, but it, it's there. Uh, yeah. there. In that same level, you like pick up a hammer and you have to like beat through these walls. Just There's just some really like random things every (laughs) now and then um there's a level where you almost for the majority of it you're moving upwards um Mm. 
Mm, okay. Kind of has like a Battletoads X Men yeah. or, or Mega Man. Mega Man. X Men. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like you said, as you move up, the below you doesn't stay there. And right. so if you fall, you die. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really the only place where I noticed that whole thing kind of bothered me was when you're moving upwards because yeah. um, it makes it a little more difficult. But as far as I can tell, going to each level doesn't really provide any additional help other than uh, being able to collect more things to get more lives. Okay. Um, and so I think that's really the only reason you would want to play all the levels is if you want to like stock up on uh, lives and stuff. And so that's yeah. the other thing is there's two collectibles, I think, in this game. Yeah, uh, so. maybe Maybe three. Um, like so there's flowers? Little flower token icons and then stars. Yeah. <laughs> And you have to collect so many to get extra lives. But the game doesn't really tell you how many you have or how many you need to get (laughs) unless it's in the manual. And so you can't really keep track, (laughs) which seems a little odd to me. And every now and then I think you collect enough and like a star will float in from off screen. I read that it's 100 of the flower pots and 20 of the stars. Okay. And so there's a lot of flowers around so that getting a hundred of those isn't as difficult as it sounds, mm-hmm. especially in some of the later levels. They're kind of everywhere. Okay. Um, but then there's also this thing, uh, that I found a couple times, uh, has a P on it and looks like a little bottle. Um, hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't know what that. it is though. It, it puts a P next to the C, which stands for a chip, or mm. I guess it would be the D if you were Dale. Okay. But I don't know what that P is all about, and huh. I, I never looked it up. I probably yeah. should have tried to pull up the manual and probably say. I think um, if you hit the select button while you're playing, it brings up a little menu that shows some stats, and I think that's one of them, so I have no idea what that is. Dude, means. I didn't even pr- I've never even pressed select in this game. Yeah, I, I was testing that out earlier today, and, and I found that out. Huh. Yeah, it's different from hitting start, because start pauses the game, but select... Also pauses Uh, the game, but brings up like a stat screen that I didn't understand. Well, dang. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we'll have to look up a manual for it or something. Yeah, I need to. I'm not entirely sure. So forgive me. I I fell a little short there. Last thing, they have bombs scattered throughout some levels, uh, which you can pick up. And if you hold them too long, they blow up on you and you get hurt. Ouch. Um, I don't really know what else they provide, like as far as the it's not like you need them at any point that right. i've seen you don't have to like blow they're holes just, in the wall or anything right no and so they're just kind of there as far as i can tell huh weird um so other than that um that's pretty much it it's a very simple you know game there's not a lot to it picking up things is a little complicated because you have to hold over while pressing mm-hmm. was it b? b yeah yeah and so um there's that that's a takes a little bit of getting used to and then there's also the stacking mechanic um, right i didn't get to that point <laughs> where i used that so i saw i did see that though yeah and there's certain parts where you gotta you know stack some of those nuts uh those metal nuts on top of each other in order to get across gaps or get to certain areas um and then the final mechanic i keep saying that uh is the boss battles i would say those are kind yeah. of the final things and uh, there's stationary battles, um, mm-hmm. and really the only thing you do is throw this red ball at yeah. the bosses. So weird. Um, I don't know where they got the red ball from, but no, me neither. Visually, it's it's it draws you to it, so you're like, oh, clearly this big red circle thing is for something, and yeah. so uh, I think naturally you just kind of want to use it. And you throw yeah. it the bosses. So as far as I could tell, yeah. as far as I can remember, it's literally every boss is the same way. So. Yeah, that's what I noticed. And and most of them just attack you with some sort of projectile. I did see that like the final boss literally is ashing a cigar on you, and that's like that's what you have to avoid. <laughs> so, so oh, fat that. cat and oh, your cigar addiction. Uh, you know. Don't do drugs or smokes, kids. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's pretty much most of the mechanics I could think of um, as well. Uh, yeah. difficulty wise, like I said, I couldn't get through the first level because I didn't really invest the time and effort into it. And you said you were kind of struggling later on in the game. So obviously it does ramp up. Would you say that it was blockbuster brutal? Uh, no, not okay. that far. I wouldn't say blockbuster brutal. Um, maybe, maybe for a kid it would be on that level, but yeah, 
for somebody our age or even a little bit older, I I'd say it's pretty manageable. Okay. Um, at so least in the for beginning. an hour, and then you'll be able to get through it eventually. Totally. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just think it definitely the last three levels. Um, which are like purposely kind of separate from the rest of the game. Uh, definitely, it's where it gets a lot more intense. Okay. They throw a lot more at you. The the enemies are just crazy and coming at you from every angle. So it does get a little bit more overwhelming uh, toward the end. But it's totally doable. It's no Lion King. Um, yeah. But but I totally like don't judge you for struggling with the first level because. <laughs> Like I said, it, it takes a little like getting used to and working with it, and um, and so somebody who hasn't really played the game and don't understand the mechanics, it could be a little more difficult. Mm-hmm. Whether or not two player makes the difficulty easier, like if it makes it less hard, I don't. I honestly, it's been a while since I've done two player, so yeah, I didn't uh, have a chance to test that, so I don't know either. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't either. Um, but. So I don't know if if it like makes it harder when you have two people or if it's the yeah. same and having two people maybe makes it easier. I would imagine it would, yeah. uh, but who knows? Yep. Fair enough. Um, okay. With that, I think that kind of covers all the gameplay and, and difficulty discussion. I, I don't really have anything else to add as far as difficulty beyond that. I did struggle with it. So uh, from there we can kind of jump into the story and go through some of the levels uh, that we kind of touched on earlier and, uh, Yeah, we'll just jump right into that. So the story, essentially, I'm just going to read you kind of an excerpt here. Uh, The Rescue Rangers are going on a mission to retrieve a missing kitten for a girl named Mandy. As Gadget goes on ahead to scout the area, and Monterey Jack is sent to investigate sightings of strange mechanical dogs with a zipper, Chip and Dale proceed through the streets and into a laboratory, or laboratory, where they are attacked by a crazed robot. After they defeat the robot, Fat Cat appears and reveals that Mandy's kitten was just a, dis- just a distraction so he could kidnap Gadget and force her to work for him. Fortunately, Gadget is able to contact Chippendale by building a wireless phone and sending a map of- to them via a carrier pigeon, of all things, allowing them to navigate through the treacherous landscapes and reach Fat Cat's casino, because of course, all big fat villains have casinos, as yep. you lately has also taught us, uh, where <laughs> she's being held. After rescuing her, Gadget provides the chipmunks with a rocket that sends them towards Fat Cat's hideout so that they may defeat him. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of straight out of what the cartoon plots were usually similar to. Um, Nothing too crazy there, just classic kidnapping and try and find your way to the evil mastermind's lair and yada yada. So, um, you start out in the backyard. You've got kind of some cactuses and flower pots and... uh, climb up like i said a telephone pole or electrical pole i guess we find out um and then tightrope walk the electrical wires which somehow even though you're not grounded they can still electrocute you video games <laughs> yeah guys judge. come on jeez <laughs> cutting corners here what have you ever seen a chipmunk get electrocuted just walking on an electrical wire Sheesh. <laughs> they um, should have hired a, a scientist to be they really development yep, yep i call shenanigans um so yeah, it's it's kind of cool that I, I like that you know you start on the ground and work your way up, and that the mechanics of it, of the platforming, really do change as you go higher. Um, and then, strangely, the telephone pole that wasn't there at the very beginning of the level, as you get from right to left at the, uh, it suddenly there's another telephone pole to climb. So we won't such we won't, a stickler. We Jeez. won't judge them for level design. Hey man, gotta call it like I see it. Um, <laughs> And I didn't meet the first level, so I don't know how it ends. Do you just get to the end of the telephone cable? You do, and then you enter a new area, um, which is like the laboratory area. Okay. Um, and so there's like, um, not Bunsen burners, but there's like glass. Uh, what are those things called? Like that oh, s- scientists use. Yeah, vials. <laughs> Something like that. We'll just um, say vials. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so there's like you're on a desk. There's like pencils and things, and mm-hmm. um, then that, that's where you run into these like r- robot rats that are pretty uh, pretty mean. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, you work your way through until you get to the boss. Um, which, by the way, when we were talking about difficulty, I totally forgot to mention this. Um, pretty much wherever you are in the level, if you die, 
it oh, kicks you back to the beginning all the way back yeah yeah it's and not the most gracious with that kind of stuff mm, agreed there's also an invincibility thing you can pick up like a or you touch a crate and i think it's your little zipper friend who like, yeah comes a zipper gives you invincibility but as but far as I've played, I played for like 45 minutes today. I did not see him come back in any of the other levels. Okay. Maybe he's in one of the levels I missed or I didn't get, but like it doesn't, he's not like a very prominent no. like, ability it, in this game, which is It shows it to you very early on and like right as you reach the first electrical pole, but like, yeah, I didn't, I think in the long play I saw, I saw him one other time later on. Okay. So he but, is. So he is there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then thankfully when you hit a boss, if you die, it doesn't make you start at the beginning of the level. It does let you start at the boss. Okay. Which, if it wasn't for that, dude, this would be... <laughs> even though the bosses aren't terribly difficult, yeah. uh, I do die on them, and they are still a bit challenging. So, yeah. um, so it was a little bit more helpful there. Uh, you do only have three continues, I believe. I think it's three continues, and, and you have three hit points as well. That's right. So... so you hit three times. Um, you can game over. Uh, I, I assume if you game over, you have to start at the very beginning of the game. Mm, I didn't probably. game over recently, so I don't remember. But I game over in level one, so it didn't really make a difference. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't. You wouldn't have been started able to right level. where I was. I yeah. assume it would just make you start the whole game over after you do mm -hmm. that. But yeah. there was a lot of times where I was very far into a level, and then I would die and have to. Um, yeah, start at the very beginning of the level, and it was pretty frustrating. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, uh, in some of the boxes that you throw, you'll find these acorns, which give yeah. you extra uh, hearts. Give okay, you hearts I was just back. about to ask. I just saw those in the tree level, um, which is the next yeah, one. Yeah, and honestly, I didn't even know those were in there for a while because I kind of originally the way i would play is i would ignore all the boxes that you could mm, throw you just and i just try to one. get through the level as quick as i could yeah um but once i realized there's a lot of good stuff in them hidden in them i started like getting rid of every like clearing every area of boxes looking for that kind of stuff and yeah. so they're pretty generous with where they are and how many there are okay. they're not super scarce so that was nice i did appreciate mm -hmm. that um so anyway sorry i just wanted to kind of throw that at the difficulty a little bit just to give people a better idea cool um so after uh -huh. you beat the robot you go to the next level which is the tree village or yeah. the garden um, and this one is pretty vertical you're climbing up the tree there's some flying squirrels that come at you there's some caterpillars on the branches um is there any other enemies i feel like those are the two that i just see in the i'm pretty sure that's it yeah the flying squirrels are the worst even though they're like super <laughs> cool looking because they're ninjas yeah, yeah. um <laughs> of course they, they are they come at you diagonally which yeah in and, and passing game, through everything yeah yeah and then the caterpillars will just drop. they'll be looking <laughs> yeah and you don't know when they're gonna drop they'll just yeah. drop down all of a sudden and you're like yeah. ow it looks, so, <laughs> it looks tricky this is one of those levels i had to play through it a couple times to kind of like memorize it and figure out how things worked and okay. how to get through it uh once i got to the boss the boss was relatively easy yeah um looks like he's just an owl that drops feathers that are easy to avoid yep yep and not too throw hard the famous red ball at him throw that red ball that apparently we're carrying around with us <laughs> um other thing to note at the end of every level there's a little bonus round where you can as quickly as possible throw these crates uh, or the boxes and then there's things underneath but okay. literally the top middle box every time is an extra life so <laughs> you just go up and grab that you get the best thing that you nice. can get in there every time it's like not random so okay um, well, yeah fair enough cool uh from there then you move on into what looks to be what the bar the bar is it depends bar. which way you oh yeah go, you can choose either a library or this the is bar. just the one that i've got in front of me yeah so yeah um so you can choose your levels and then back to that level select screen like you mentioned. So I guess every Let's Play of this is probably different. So the one I'm watching has you in the bar. Um, yes. Now, is there always just kind of a couple that you can choose or does it kind of branch depending on the previous level you played? It's, like if, if you play the bar second, then is there the third level have to be the other one you didn't play or does it then open up another set of levels that would be different than if you played the library or do you know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, I do. Basically, after this, so the first level is over, then you have to go to the second level. Yeah. Then you have option of B or C. Okay. And then after you do that, you have to do D. And oh, then okay. you have the option between E and F, and okay. then you have to do G. So it's like forced to play a level, then you have an option between two, 
forced to do a level so option of two kind of like super mario odyssey <laughs> i was like there's a game i just played recently like that and it was that although it does yeah. eventually make you kind of go into each one but still like it it did let you pick one or two and then kind of just move on so that's true um, not yeah. quite to the same degree but similar um okay well that's cool i i like that they were trying new stuff you know and, and like you said it's a little bit like mario 3 um not Everywhere in Mario 3 had a branching path, but sometimes you could kind of go the up or the down or the left or the right. So, cool. Yeah, and, and DuckTales uh, also kind of let you pick what order you wanted to tackle levels. You couldn't really skip. You had to play them all, but you kind of got to... And same with Darkwing Duck. You could choose where you went first. Okay. So I think that was kind of a staple for Capcom was trying to give the player some freedom and what yeah. order they want to tackle certain things. But like I said, if you don't want to play both levels in this, you can just play the one and move on to the next one. You don't have to play both of them. Uh, okay. And there wasn't really a ton of reward for playing both, but that's just, that's my opinion. So, yeah. Huh. <laughs> um, shoot. I had another question and I've already lost it, but I just saw that there's this character in the, uh, I don't know the kitchen level where he like kind of clones you and he looks like you and you have to kill yourself yeah it's kind of funny yeah clone enemies it's yeah interesting idea creative yeah um so okay d uh do you want to kind of go into detail on either the library or the bar or do we just kind of yeah so just real quick the bar kind of feels like an 80s diner bar mm -hmm. you've got bar stools and tables uh this level is a good representation of the different uh, planes that you can stand on or like you know it's not just up or down there's mm. um even with the laboratory level where there's the um i still can't think of what those things are called the vials or whatever yeah. they have like corks on top of them so you can yeah. stand on top of the bottle or you can stand on top of the cork which is just a little bit taller okay. and so That's cool. um this game was all about giving you different like heights or levels that you could be on at once and there was never really a set amount that was required or like the norm, I guess. Yeah. And so, um, so this was another good level like that. The, the bar part's not that interesting. It's not until you hit the kitchen that mm. it gets really interesting. Uh, it's where you have the sinks that you have to jump on the nozzles to turn them off right. to get through. Yeah. Uh, then you go to like these stoves with these uh, cooking pots um that you have to jump over and this is where you get to the one of the enemies i hate the most in this game is like this gray fly mm -hmm. and i don't understand how it works but sometimes not always it will just constantly keep spawning and then oh, no. it, it's the way it attacks is it, it you'll, it'll come on screen and then it'll start dropping from the ceiling and as soon as it gets to the same level as you it will come straight at you and so you either jump throw okay. something at it or get under it and okay. as soon as you kill it or get or it flies past you, it respawns and does the same thing oh, over and over. Man, okay, and yeah, that's so. Funny. I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's intentional because it only does it sometimes. Oh, um, interesting. But it's it's really annoying. Okay. Um, and hmm. so that's the first place you see them. They come back later and ruin my day. Yeah. So. And then you get to the love, uh, the boss in the kitchen. So, uh, you know, kitchen bar, we have all these themes like, all right, so what's going to be a good boss for this one? And, uh, the, the, the fine folks over at Capcom decided a, uh, flying saucer a UFO with aliens, a UFO with little goo <laughs> monsters. Uh, of course. I guess maybe it works with the clone alien things that mm. are in that level. Yeah, I guess so. And so, the ship drops um, these little goo guys with one eye, mm -hmm. and then you have to throw octopus. the ball up and hit them. Yeah, yeah, little octopus looking things. But this this boss is hard, man. Is I it? don't know why. You just don't know where he's gonna drop those little guys, and oh, so okay. uh, and another thing about the the red ball is if you get hit by your own ball, you like get stunned, and it kind of like makes you see stars, and you can't move for a second, mm. which is pretty funny. So. You throw it up in the air, and then you have to dodge that coming down, and then you have two goo monsters that are going to run in opposite directions. So okay. it, it's honestly one of the more challenging and probably, even though it's pretty simple, probably one of the better thought-out bosses, if you ask me. Okay. Um, but So that's that level. Not, cool. not a ton. Yeah. Um, 
I can talk about the library if you would like. Yeah, let's just touch on um, it. Um, maybe the enemy quickly. types. And, and yeah, there's a really cool enemy in this one, which is the kangaroo. Kangaroo with the tennis racket. Yeah, and so I guess <laughs> she or he keeps pulling uh, tennis balls or some kind of balls out of its pouch and then proceeds to hit them with a racket. And <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's just like Hilarious, a Hilarious, really, yeah. Yeah, it's a great idea for an enemy so yeah i don't know if that's from the show or if they just kind of came up with that on their own but yeah uh, it's definitely one of the more clever uh enemies so i like that uh level starts off with bookshelves all all kinds of books stacked up Mm -hmm. um obviously you're small so everything in this game uh indoors or outdoors is kind of amplified and so eventually you get up higher up and there's uh ceiling fans oh yep there is uh there's one of the little fly guys invincibility moments see i didn't play this level recently so i missed it um and so at the end of the level you're kind of going from um like ceiling fan to light bulb and trying Mm -hmm. not to fall down and so this is a level where there is no boss at the end of it you just play it and then Mm, you go on to the next level and i noticed that um, some of the levels i played later not every level has a, a boss in fact there's 11 levels total with only eight bosses so okay was that four levels that, yeah um Three, eh, yeah i think i uh, yeah i don't know i just maybe it adds some variety or they're like we can't come up with enough bosses <laughs> yeah um, storage time who knows yeah one of those one of those two things so but it's kind of nice when you get to the end of the level and it's just like hey you beat it here's the jingle and your bonus level and you're like oh good i don't have to pl- uh, fight a boss i'm just i'm done okay cool that's good yeah. So it's kind of a relief. I like it. Um, it's a nice change of pace too. Yeah. Um. So the next level after that, I'm actually just watching the let's play as we do this. It looks like a toy thing. I don't know. What yeah, it's one. a toy factory. I believe. Okay. Yeah, it says toy factory. Um, but there's like presents like gift wrapped, but then there's like a bunch of bears maybe in their boxes with like the cellophane between you yep. and them. Um. And some kind of molded shelving, maybe. I don't know. It's interesting. It's got like you know, like tiled background and stuff like that. So, um, it's like the primary enemy in this one actually looks really cool. It's these like spinning dudes with like these blue balls for arms. Um, yeah, they're they're interesting because they'll reach below them. You can't okay. hurt them, and so the only way you can stop them from reaching below, so you can run underneath them, uh-huh. is to throw something at them, which spins them. Uh-huh. And okay. then it stops them from like reaching below Attacking. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's also these like imposter boxes in this level that oh, are weird. on springs. And so you'll run over like, ooh, a box. And you go to grab it. And then all of a sudden it grows eyes and it can bounce up and down. <laughs> and so it's very, like, uh, oh. Who Framed Roger Rabbit or Acme or Looney Tunes or whatever. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's um, funny. And then you hit the second part of the stage, not to take it away from you. No, keep going. This part's kind of hard. Uh, there's these rabbits uh, enemies. Yeah, that I just saw that. They like lift up the carpet and make ripples in the carpet. <laughs> yeah. And try to hurt you. And no matter what part of the, you know, top or middle or yeah. whatever, they're, they'll be there. And yeah. it's really, as soon as they come into, they like uh, spawn into the map or onto the side of the screen, they immediately start attacking. And so. Okay you really have like very little reaction time to actually react. Oh, and so you just kind of have to inch over and then all of a sudden they spawn. And what I was doing was I would literally throw the box and jump up and backwards at the same time. Oh man. And it was just okay. like this, like knee jerk, like panic reaction, like Holy crap. <laughs> and just trying yeah. to like get away from it. And so it was pretty difficult. Actually. It was not the yeah. easiest thing. Um, and then further into the level, you get these, light switches uh mm-hmm. which you need boxes or to jump to flick it up and then you can stand on it to flip it down and and those switches controlled uh these uh shoots that would drop these big silver balls out of them yeah and so that's something that uh i think is it gadget or gadget she kind of warns you about uh in one okay. of the cutscenes. so that's kind of her thing is in between levels she'll give you little warnings uh about certain things in in each level usually it's kind of vague and it isn't overly helpful but that was one where it's like hey you need to flip these switches to to survive okay and so it's nice gives you a little heads up on um what you're going into assuming you pick that level but right um 
Okay. So so that's kind of, you head toward the end of the level, and there's all these rat packages because they're boxes, and platformers are good f- with boxes. Um, and then you get to the boss for the level. Uh, yeah. Do you, would you like to explain the boss? or would you? Like well, to I'm going to just look at him and tell you what I see. So he looks like this big robot toy thing. Um, he shoots super balls out of him that kind of fall from the sky. And you avoid those, and then you just pick up your trusty red ball and <laughs> throw it at th- at him. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's like much more to that. He's kind of like got like a tank wheels and just moves back and forth. Yeah, dodging the the falling little red balls, it kind of mm-hmm. has like a Donkey Kong Country feel to it. Um, there's a lot of like bosses and even like oh, tropical okay. freeze where things yeah. drop and you kind of have to find the gap. I was thinking Bowser in Super Mario World, but yeah, I totally know what you mean. That too. Yeah. Um, the hitboxes on these are janky, man. Are they? Yeah, it's like uh, there was a lot of times I I took hits trying to get through them that I felt like I didn't really deserve. That sucks. Um, I I felt that in the first level with the cactuses when I was trying to jump over a cactus. Like I would think I was jumping on time, but I'd be jumping right into the hitbox, which was above the cactus. So yeah. I'd imagine that that happens with several items in this game. So that's unfortunate. There's, a, there's another boss that or some janky hitboxes too. But oh well. It um, <laughs> yeah. It, okay. It's NES. Yeah. Next up is the garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll try to keep going through these quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah burn through. Picket fences, cocoons that drop down on you, um, outdoors, more imposter box enemies. This is the one I was talking about where you get a hammer that you like work your way through some rocks. Okay. Uh, which it also has the boat that I didn't get to check out. I wish I had played this level. Yeah. Looking at it's it because like, there's quite a bit in it. Yeah, the little bugs that pop out of the bushes look a lot like the um there's like a enemy in Epic Mickey that looks oh. just like it. Yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of this like beetle bug looking thing. Looks very similar totally. in style. So yeah. And then toward the end of the level it has some sand with these little beetle dudes. And uh then you get to a boss for the level, which is a fish that shoots uh Lightning, lightning, lightning <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of weird. Is it like it's an electric fish. electric fish, yeah. Uh, but he just kind of floats around essentially, and you throw the ball at him. Yep. So, yeah. So, so that's that one. Super easy. Following level is the sewers, uh, which underneath there is a bunch of falling gray balls, similar mm. to the ones from earlier. Yeah. Um, you have to. This one takes a, advantage of, or makes you take advantage of, like a lighter jump. Because uh, we didn't really talk oh, about the jumping okay. in this game. Yeah, but, if you hold it down. Um, you hold it down, it jumps higher. Yeah. If you just lightly tap it, you get less of a jump. And so mm-hmm. uh, there's some gaps in this one. It's just a lot easier if you just kind of give it a light tap. Okay, um, that's cool. And then uh, eventually you do make it to the uh, upward part of the level that I was talking about earlier. Right, the disappearing platform kind of yeah. climber Mega Man style. Yeah, it's total Mega Man. And... Uh, they're like to a rhythm. I think it's in like three or fours. Oh, okay. And so if you kind of count it out, you can kind of, but I don't know. Eventually it was just like, I don't know what it wants me to do, but I saw an opening <laughs> and I just like panicked my way to the top very quickly. Fair enough. Uh, I think I died like the first time I fell down into nothing. Um, but then after that, I was just like happy to be through it. And I was like, I really hope I don't have to do that again. Cause it was, it was a little uh, nerve wracking, but Thankfully, yeah. no boss at the end of the level. Moving on to the next level, which is the casino. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just based on what I'm seeing here, uh, it looks very similar to kind of the bar a little bit where you've kind of got the chairs yeah. and then like the tabletops. Um, the new enemy looks like this alligator guy, kind of a crocodile. And what's he got? Like He's got a, a cowboy vest? hat. Okay. I was the thinking vest. crocodile Dundee, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's got a cowboy hat and a little black vest and... Uh, what does he do? He jumps? Does he does he have a projectile? I think he just No, nope, he just jumps, which like up to this point. Enemies. Yeah, nothing super great. Yeah. Uh funny thing is if you're on the top row mm-hmm. and you go up against him, he'll just jump out of existence. Oh, uh, yeah, off screen. He jumps himself. off screen <laughs> and then he just doesn't come back. And I'm like, "All right, that works. <laughs> Don't have to worry about dodging that." Yeah. Very <laughs> NES uh, of him. But I noticed there's there's some other enemies too that just die or just disappear if they go up top too high, and so yeah. a lot of the time I spent just playing up top and yeah, uh, makes sense for whatever reason. Um, then there's another enemy. It's like a rhino football player. 
Uh, okay. I, uh, Which he's kind of got a vibe from. I don't forget what that guy's name is in Super Char- Mario Charging World. Chuck. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's got a Charging Chuck vibe going on. <laughs> cool. um, surprisingly, he only takes one hit. Uh, there was a, an enemy in an earlier level. Uh, it's like these big, strong, like red birds or something. Yeah. They take two hits. Oh, um, weird. Yeah, I'm surprised they, this one doesn't too. And so them inclu- and these rhino football players will charge through um, or kick uh, boxes. And so mm. the boxes that you can pick up, they will get rid of if you don't like get to them quick enough. And so yeah. that was kind of an interesting change up uh, yeah. where the enemies could kind of interact with those for once. Um, so you make your way through the casino and uh, – at the very end of the level, there's two bombs in front of the door that you just throw away, and then you're past that part. Um, then it goes to this blue room, which I actually really struggled with this part. Um, i trying to remember what it was that kept killing me. Um, maybe it wasn't this part. Then you get to the end of the level. You have to stack those uh, metal nu- nuts, nuts. Yeah. up, and then you're able to jump the final gap uh, to the end of the uh, level, which is where you hit the next boss. Um I think that's a cat. I can't Looks tell. Looks like he's a wearing, cat. Yeah. He's wearing a tuxedo top. Um, I, I would say that's a cat. <laughs> he's sitting okay. on a slot machine and throwing stuff down at you. Coins uh, from the oh, slot yeah, machine. Oh, yeah, there you go. That, makes, that would make a lot of sense. And uh, trusty red ball. And two tacks on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just like in little gaps is, in the floor. Yeah, and this is where that hitbox was really janky I was telling mm-hmm. you about. Very similar to the cactus, it looks like. Right. There's like these jacks that sit directly underneath him. And so you kind of have to sit off center. But if you get like too close to it, even if you don't touch it or fall down next to it, it kept hitting me and I was getting really frustrated. And so yeah. uh, eventually I was just like, oh, and I just kind of found another spot that worked. Um, so after you beat him, you finally get Gadget back. You give her some flowers and she puts you on a rocket, shoots you up into space. And <laughs> then you proceed. Like tails. <laughs> You proceed to land back down closer to the end of the game, which okay. I thought was a very strange way to travel. Who <laughs> who travels up into space to come back down to Earth? Right. Different, she like puts like, you into uh, orbit and then brings you back to Earth. Right. I was like, okay, I guess, I guess she's known for having h- gadgets, obviously, and so right. rocket. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. why not? They have a their own flying like helicopter thing in the show, though. Like the flying hot like, dog, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, we don't want to animate that. We're just going to do a rocket (laughs) because rockets are easy to make. Everyone knows how to make a rocket. And uh, so it felt a little lazy, but it's really a stretch to gripe about it. But um, so then this is where the game really gets hard, dude. This is this level kicked my butt. Uh, I eventually did beat it. But, man, I thought I thought this was going to be the end for me. (laughs) Uh, Okay. so so the last three levels are mandatory you can't choose what you get you got the harbor turbo fans and the dangerous factory okay um would you like to describe what you're seeing uh yeah with the harbor so this one it, to me it looks like a sewer it looks like there's a bunch of pipes yeah i don't um, know why they called it harbor crabs flying squirrels are back um yeah what the heck the freaking random flying is squirrels are back random as heck but <laughs> yeah um the crabs like will occasionally just shoot out bubbles that will come out and kind of <sighs> One straight down and then two down into the left and right, um, yep. which looks like a pain to avoid. Um, yep. There's a lot of vertical and horizontal movement in here and, and different paths where you have to kind of avoid a main stopping point and go up and then back down and up and down through the, like the pipes. Um, the background texture is really cool here. It's like the blue yeah. brickwork and there's some grates that are opening that look like they kind of have stuff running out of them a little bit. It's kind of different color. So um yeah, there's that, and then it looks like eventually you get to another phase of it where there's a little more white. <laughs> um, yeah. But ultimately, it looks about the same. Um, the clones come back. Um, yeah. So you have to battle them again, which, yeah. they're, honestly, they're really easy. Then the this bear comes back from an earlier level that shoots green goo at you. Oh, it's yeah. It's kind of guy. annoying. Yeah. Um, but then they give you a crap ton of those flower coins in this level toward the okay. end, which was kind of nice yeah um so you make your way through that um no boss it looks like on this one so no boss okay interesting so that one yeah so that one was rough uh those octopus things that you were talking about that shoot 
bubbles or pearls or yeah. whatever they are. Those guys are tough, and you have to kind of attack them from below. And so you got to throw stuff up at them, and they shoot three projectiles every time. And man, they just yeah. they got me so much. Yeah. Um, and then the flying squirrels, like I mentioned, just don't make things any easier. Okay. So then the following level was the level that I basically rage quit on today, <laughs> um, okay. which for whatever reason is called Turbo Fans. And you are in a person's house, and there's uh, stacked mugs everywhere, yeah. and there's like these thumbtacks that are uh, obviously sharp and can hurt you. But yeah. the the main thing in this level, which it's pretty much completely ripping off, uh, like Fan Man from Mega Man. I think oh, that's okay. what he was called, or Wind Man, one of those two. Okay. Um, and so there's these high-powered fans that push you in either direction. Yeah, just make it hard uh, to progress left to right, yeah. Right, and so you just kind of have to go slow, or then it pushes you uh, at some thumbtacks, and you have to jump over them real quickly. Yeah. Um, one thing that I struggle with, there's an enemy in this level that is like a pelican uh-huh. uh, dude, and he, if you throw boxes at him, he eats them, and throws him back at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I could not. I, so I assumed you just had to jump over him. But he's really tall. And yeah. so you have to get super close to him. And I kept dying on them. And so that was part of the reason I rage quit. Oh, I felt okay. like I was missing something. Now watching somebody else play it, I'm realizing, oh, I think if you throw it while throw his head is up. Feet. Right, like his feet, then it, yeah. hurt, it kills him. And so there's this part I'm looking at right now where yep. there's a, a pelican on top of a fan. Yeah, I literally just saw that. <laughs> I could not get past this part. Uh, I kept dying because I was trying to jump over him. It looks like the and it, it probably is. Um, oh, don't tell me that. That's going to make me feel even stupider. <laughs> um, and so I kept just trying to. Totally and where the is. fan. Yeah, it literally is. There's one right after it. And then Dang it's it. the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, just, it was it was tough. <laughs> it was a very interesting. They purposely yeah. were like, "This will be it's, hard." It's a tough enemy. Um, yeah, who knew? And so um, you get through that part, and then uh, you're on to a desk part where there's a phone, and uh, back to the robot mice. They come back. Yeah. Um, another invincibility fly yeah, this guy. Is I saw. Yeah. I would have would have got to him if I had gotten a little bit further. Hmm. Um, Looks like some drug scales. Drug scales, got to have those to yeah. weigh out those things. Uh, and then you have a boss who is a, a caterpillar who uh, <laughs> his body falls to pieces Lovely. and uh, you have to dodge them and then he comes back together and you continue to throw your uh, trusty red ball that yeah. you have Yeah. and uh, eventually he dies. He doesn't look terribly hard, but he's mm, probably harder yeah. than he looks. I guess his, his bits when they attack, they kind of bounce erratically so right a challenge but it doesn't look yeah. super hard um yeah so there you then move into the dangerous factory um this one's got conveyor belt mechanic which is not super dissimilar to the fan mechanic where it's like if you're on the conveyor i mean it's similar to the conveyor belts in like some of the marios and stuff like mario 3 um or at least i'm thinking mario maker <laughs> i actually don't know what those conveyor belts <laughs> are from but essentially, yeah, if you're running against the conveyor belt, you go slow. And if you're running with it, you kind of move fast. And it's the challenge of avoiding the enemies and the, the rhino guys. Um, and then once you get past that part, you're up into kind of a more factory part where there looks to be weasels and fedoras. Where do the weasels like, come from? That's a Mickey thing. Right. I was going to say that's like a bunch of other Disney properties use weasels and fedoras. But OK, um, it looks like they have a... a literally a plunger crossbow <laughs> that they're shooting at you dude um, we've we've already covered weasels like what <laughs> twice on this show at least yeah mickey mania and uh the racing game that we just played oh yep. uh, they're, they're <laughs> yeah in the... they are classic disney villains apparently they um, are but i just i i wonder if they're in the show because i feel yeah, like i don't recall i don't recall <sighs> well, um that's... <laughs> kind of frustrating yeah uh you get past that part then there's this conveyor belt with like axes and i'm just trying to think of a factory where there i mean maybe it would be cutting things that are like molded together i don't know yeah with why there's like axes. battle axes <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um past that part you get the alligators again these ones throw fedoras at you or cowboy yeah, hats at you. yeah you're so right they cool. have projectiles now um so that's an upgrade and kind of a cool reuse of an enemy and then uh you eventually get past that i mean some platforming up to the top and then all of a sudden you're at the final boss um who we briefly touched on earlier <laughs> mr mr fat cat himself yes and his terrible cigar his cigar habit <laughs> mm. child abuse yeah 
and uh, mm. you throw the ball at him enough times he's just sitting behind his desk laughing at you and ashing on you and that teaches him a lesson after you beat him and uh yeah so i don't think i've ever seen a, a boss use cigar ash as an attack right can't That's say that i have you there um <laughs> so that pretty much sums it up um yeah, I, I don't know that I have anything else on that. I think we kind of talked through it, and uh, we're at probably a good point. Do you want to go ahead and jump into the final thoughts? Let's do it. All right, final thought time. All right, so ultimately this is a fun and challenging platformer in from the, uh, I would say, the golden age of the Capcom Disney tie-in platformers. Um, not that there is a non-golden age. It pretty much was all from this time period. Um, I would, I would definitely recommend it. I, I myself, I'm going to kind of try and get a little bit further into it. Uh, now that I've not, <laughs> now that I've got the time to just kind of play it and not be trying to rush towards a deadline of any variety. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's well-made. I, I don't really have any complaints or anything that it's unfair. Um, I like it and I give it a thumbs up. What about you? All right, so as far as other Capcom games go, it's not DuckTales good, but it's okay. def- but it's definitely better than Little Mermaid, uh, I would say. Um, not that Little Mermaid was a bad game even, so like I'm comparing this against other good games. Uh, I haven't played enough Darkwing Duck to say for sure how it stacks against that. I never owned that one as a kid. I have, I have it now, but... Um, no, it's definitely worth playing. Like you said, it's totally a good game. It's Capcom. It has good music, good visuals, uh, enough variety, I would say. It's not too repetitive, I think. And if you want to spend more time with it, you can. Or if you just kind of want to rush through and play the minimum, you can totally do that as well. I mean, you can be done with this game if you're not terrible. And, like, I don't know. How long was your long play? What was it? Uh, like 38 or 45 minutes. Yeah, like, like, I mean, I played for 45 minutes. I got to the second to last level. So if I worked on it a little bit, I could probably even get through it quicker. Um, so it's not a, a terribly long game, uh, especially if you know your way around. It, it does take a little bit of work getting to learn the mechanics, learn the levels, how the enemies work. But it's a fun one once you kind of get those things down. Uh, I think the more you play it, the more fun you'll have with it. I'm not against using save states on this this game. I think uh, if you wanted to save every level just so you didn't have to, you know, game over and repeat stuff, I think you might have a little bit more fun with it, not having yeah. to worry about going through continues. But if you're actively pursuing collectibles, you can get quite a few uh, extra lives in this game to keep it running. So, um yeah, it's a classic. I'm like totally, I know a lot of people love this game and uh, we honestly probably should have had a guest on for this because I'm sure there's a ton of people out there that love this game, mm-hmm. but yeah. um, we're still working on that. But until then, we'll we'll just keep talking about ourselves. I'm interested <laughs> to check out the second game though because I've literally never played the second one. I yeah. might have like, I might have loaded it up once on like a ROM or something, but okay. I don't know a whole lot about it. So I'm really curious to see how that one transfers over. Same. So, uh, one of these days we will definitely ch- take a look at it. So. Absolutely. Yeah. We're, we'll try to cover all of these from this era. So for sure. Yeah. Um, and with that, I think we'll kind of close out the show for today. So thank you all so much for joining us this week. And, Uh, As always, we ask that you, if you do like the show, give us a a thumbs up or a like or a review or or whatever on whatever you're listening on. As always, you can give us a follow on Twitter at mouse underscore bytes, B-Y-T-E-S, just to keep up with whatever we're releasing and when. And uh, as always, you can find us on thenintendovillage.com. From there, you can find links to all of our episodes as well as other great shows, reviews, and other content. Our episodes are also on the Nintendo Village YouTube, so if you'd like to see gameplay along with the episodes, if you didn't happen to catch that this time, you can always check us out there as well. So thanks again and join us for the next episode, and uh, hope you have a great day, and always remember, if you need help, just call. See ya! Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, check out some of our other videos, and visit thenintendovillage.com, your home for everything Nintendo.